Welcome to this video series in which we will create a login system using Angular, Node and MySQL. Here I want to demonstrate what we will be doing in this video series. So if we go to the home page we just get rendered a simple home page and in the navigation bar we have the ability to log in and sign up. So if we go to the sign up page we can enter a first name here and it has you know validation both client side and server side and if we enter a valid email address and password we can sign up here and we get rerouted to the login menu now in the MySQL database if we were to reload the users table we'll see that we get the user ID name and email address and we'll get a hashed password here so for security reasons we hash the password so it's not in plain sight and if we then type in those details correctly we can log in and what they will do here in our application tab is it will create this token and this will create a JSON web token and this is administered by the server and it also contains a secret administered by the server which has the payload data and the security of that token itself so what that will do is it will allow us to access these protected routes which have been protected um, both on the server and the client so there's an authentication step that needs to be um, gone through and that is the login process and if the JSON web token is all well and good then we can make API requests to these routes and we can also see this post section here. If we weren't signed in, we wouldn't be able to access this route. So there is auth guarding there. And additionally, when we create a post, when we're logged in, let's just say a new post, and there is validation here as well. So the title needs to be five, the password, uh, the body needs to be 10 characters long. So I might just say a body that is more than 10 characters and if we post that we can see that we get this post here with the date and the post body and if it is the particular user that's logged in we'll get this delete um, functionality here now the way this works is well we get the JSON web token from the local storage and we have some HTTP interceptors on the Angular um, service and we can attach that to our request and then that particular token gets authenticated by the server and the server then responds whether or not it's all good to make those requests to those protected routes. So if we were to log out for example we can see that the navigation bar has changed accordingly back to the login and sign up and that's just done through behavior subjects and observables using rxjs and we're constantly looking for if the user is logged in or not and that state is then um, sent through and accessed across our application so let's just say we want to sign up for instance and let's just say we sign up at john2 at gmail.com oh sorry that's the name but if we sign up at john2 at gmail.com and then we type in the password we sign up here and then we log in john2 at gmail.com and password now we have access to see this but we can't actually delete it because we're not the user that's logged into that but what we can do is we can create a post and we can say this is John 2 post and this is some random text. So if I submit this because I'm logged in as a user, I'm able to delete this. So let's just check our database here. We can see John 2 in the users and if we go to post, we can see the particular ID and of the post but there's also the corresponding user which is associated with the ID of the user. So we've got user seven and eight here and we've got user seven and eight here. 
So finally, what we can do here is we can delete this because we're logged in as this particular user. We're authenticated to this route and authenticated as this user. And we can go ahead and we can delete this post. And we can delete it and everything happens seamlessly thanks to RxJS. And if we were to update the database, we can see that we just have access to or a record of that one post. So this is a great exercise in how to make a login system and using Angular, Node and MySQL to do so. I just wanted to give you the brief overview of the project so you can choose whether or not you want to do this. And there might be some extra functionality added to this project in the future. So I've added the GitHub files into the description in the link below. And I've also got the next video in the series link below. So if you want to have a go at doing this project, please follow along and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the latest updates. Cheers.